Okay, today we're going to assemble the keel assembly for the Jointmaker Pro V2. On the table I have my hardware and I have already pulled out of my hardware the following. The small spring pin, the front height adjuster, 16 screws and I've already put the washers on to speed up the uh, demonstration, my crank handle, a jam nut, all of the things that belong to the rear height adjustment, I've got two blade guides, I've got my uh, middle axle, my front axle, uprights, the keel, and the spine. I also am going to be using a small hammer, Phillips screwdriver, a couple of Allen wrenches, needle nose pliers, the small wrench, another set of Allen wrenches, and I'm going to show you how to burn in your bearings with an electric drill, which is really important for smooth operation of your crank handle. Okay, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is take the saw spine and go ahead and this is a little bit different than what's in your manual but I just find that it's easier to do this now. I'm just going to put in the retaining screws for the saw blade. I'm not going to tighten them very tight. I'm just going to put them in. There are five of these and we'll just get this step out of the way. I also forgot to mention that I have the uh, shim washer set over here. I have a 25, two sets. One consists of a 10,000th and a 25,000th, and I, that's times two, and I'll be using those in a little bit. Next thing we're going to do is grab the needle nose pliers and grab this little spring pin, and we're going to get this started in the hole. So I'm just going to hold that with the needle nose pliers, come over here, like so, and I got that started. Next thing I'm going to do is take the front height adjuster and I can actually see through this spring pin. So I'm going to set this in here so that I see light at the bottom. I'm going to hold that in position. And when that's assembled, that should just pivot real nice. I'm going to put this temporarily aside and we're going to start working on the keel assembly. When you get your keel assembly, the ge keel assembly, the gears are pre-assembled. You want to just make sure that they spin nice and that there's no slop. Next thing we're going to do is grab the middle, the back end axle assembly. This is also pre-assembled. And what we're going to do is position that like so and grab some screws. And I'm going to get these started, but I'm not going to tighten them yet. Grab my Allen wrench. Again, I do not want these tight at this point. Now in the manual, it points out that these gears need to be flush on the bevels. And so I'm doing a visual inspection right now. I'm lining those up and I have found that, it also says in the manual that these need to be square, but I have found that if your workbench is flat, you can just simply hold your finger down, double check that the bevel back here is smooth, no steps, and we can tighten that from here. And at this point, I should be able to roll this axle with my fingers. If you find it to be very, very stiff, you may just want to repeat that process because you should be able to turn this with your fingers. It might feel firm and that's okay. We're going to burn the bearings in later. Next thing we're going to do is take the front assembly. It has three nuts already pre-assembled. Just make sure that the front nut and the back nut are finger tight because when we burn this in, we don't want these coming loose and jamming against one of our bearing blocks. This goes on like so. Again, we're just going to get it started. right side. Now what I'm going to do is that this whole assembly will slide back and forth and what I want to do is, is align my two gears, hold that flush, and tighten that front bearing block. 
Now this back bearing block will slide. I want to push it all the way up so that it touches. Hold it flush and lock it. And at this point, I should be able to roll the entire assembly with finger pressure. Again, it still might feel stiff, that's okay. We're going to loosen it up when we burn the bearings in. Okay, so now the keel is ready to be burned in. In order to do that, we're going to put a little bit of lubrication on every, a little drop of, of uh, tri-flow on all of the friction points. So that when we burn this in, it'll be nice and smooth. We're going to get the long side, this oval hole, that's going to go up in our vise. We're going to position this such that none of the gears or the shaft are hitting anything. Come back, get our electric drill. If your chuck jaws protrude past the face of the drill chuck, you may want to put a washer on there to keep these from gouging into the top of this bearing here. I'm going to start this screw in here and you're going to want to burn this for about three minutes. So after burning in the bearings, it should be nice and smooth. Next, next step is we're going to attach <coughs> excuse me, the saw spine. This is a left-handed thread, so we've got to get that started. And I want the bottom of that thread to be even with the beginning of the bevel on the gears. The next thing I'm going to attach is the rear height adjuster and that is also going to protrude the exact same amount. I'm going to grab an upright. I'm going to flip this over. Your upright should slide smooth. And right now it's not critical that I position this perfectly, I just want to get these screws started. And we're going to put an upright on the front. Next thing I'm going to attach is the adjuster mechanism. I have a barrel nut right here. I'm going to slide that into this hole, come in from the bottom, and I'd like the smooth shank to protrude clean past the top of the barrel nut housing. Take the depth adjuster. Pinch this together so that the depth adjuster is pushed all the way down and lock that. Now my depth adjust mechanism works. At this point, I like to do the rest of the work in my vise. So before I do that, I'm going to put on the jam nut. Temporarily, we're going to attach the handle. So, come back over here. I want my handle as close as I can get to the vise to minimize flexing of the keel. What I'm going to do right now, you notice that this slides back and forth. What I'd like to do is have, this is our first go at getting this right. I'm using my fingers to align this flush. 
And I'm going to go ahead and tighten this. Now I'm going to come over to the front and you'll notice that this slides. I want to get the screws tight enough so that the, the upright doesn't tip back and forth. And I want to get this so that this has no lateral movement this way. And I'm going to temporarily tighten that. Longitudinal? Hmm? Longitudinal? What did I say? Latitudinal? Longitudinal. I want to get this so that it has no longitudinal play. Next thing I'm going to do is attach one of the blade guides. Now, the black blade guide goes on the left side if you're looking at the crank handle. Once we set this, it is never ever adjusted. It is a permanent fixture and is a reference surface for the blade. I'm going to go ahead and put in the screw. I have two shim washers. The purpose of the shim washers is so that we can control precisely the spacing of the saw spine within this mechanism. So if there are any binding issues, if a part might be slightly out of tolerance, we can fix that with the shim washers. Go ahead and get that started. Come back to the back side. Come back and get a screw. Now at this point we can tighten this. So I have a little block of wood. What I'm going to do with the block of the wood, with this block of wood, is I want to be able to push against the upright and push the saw spine in so that they are dead flush on the outside, and then I will tighten that screw. And you should feel that should just feel perfectly smooth. And we'll do that on each side. And that is done. We can go ahead and put in the second. Saw guide. This one is a different color. This is what you adjust when you change blades and they happen to be different thicknesses. Get my two shim washers. So I have my two shim washers placed on that guide. I'm going to get this started. Put the last of the 16 screws that we got out earlier. Now those are tight and we want to do is do a cursory check here and this is nowhere near as smooth as it was. And to fix that, we're going to loosen up this back upright. Now it's just ridiculously smooth. That's fantastic. And we're going to retighten this. Going to go all the way up and come back all the way down. Want to double check for lateral play? I have just a little bit longitudinal. And this is how that's fixed. Hear that? I'm just going to push at the bottom until that stops with my finger. And tighten that keel. And that is fantastic. So at this point, we take this out. And when you're all done, you should be able to hold this and by hand and just turn this nice and smooth.